a chain starts to fall on a surface we need to show that force exerted on the table by the falling part is twice that by the part already resting on the table so let's assume that the length of the chain is l when it starts falling and let's also assume that mass per unit length of the chain is lambda now it has fallen x distance and then it further falls dx distance so when the chain falls dx you can imagine that this part of the chain which is of the height dx had initially some momentum which was mv and finally it came to rest so that change in momentum of this small part will exert a force on the table so let's call that f2 star and the chain which is already on the table let's call that f1 i mean the force exerted by that chain let's call it f1 so we need to find the relation between f2 star and f1 so whatever we discussed let's just read let the force on table due to chain already on the floor be f1 and force on table due to chain hitting the surface be f2 star so let's calculate both of them so f1 is due to the chain that is already fallen so x length of chain is already fallen so f1 is m into g and m is lambda times x now f2 star so that is dp by dt and as discussed it's the change the only change in momentum is because of this part because this part is the one that is in contact with the surface so dp by dt of this small part we can write as dm into v minus 0 by dt so its velocity was v and then it came to rest so the small momentum change for that particle is dm into v minus 0 by dt now dm we can write as lambda dx so this becomes v lambda into dx by dt and dx by dt is v so this becomes lambda v square now the ground does not exert any force on the chain because chain can only have tension you cannot compress a chain so that means the it's the whole chain is in a free fall because there is no other external force which means the v square is equal to 2gx so our standard equation of motion so we'll put that and we get the f2 star as 2 lambda gx which as we can see is twice of f1 which we wanted to prove